let's talk about everything around the matrimonial home. Usually the term matrimonial home starts being used when a couple or one of the people in a marriage is contemplating separation or divorce. I'd like to share some information with you around the matrimonial home and perhaps dispel some myths. First, I need to say that this is not legal advice. If you need a family law lawyer or mediator, ask me for some names because we work with a few great ones. Now, despite what some people believe, it won't matter whose name the matrimonial home is registered to, whether one of you owned it before you got married or whether you bought the home during your relationship or marriage. While determining matrimonial home status for vacation and other types of properties can be more complicated, if this is the home that you've been living in together, it will very likely be considered the matrimonial home for divorce purposes, and its value will be divided between the two of you. I've worked with lots of divorcing and divorced couples, and while many start out by saying that one spouse is going to keep the matrimonial home and various arrangements will be made and, and come, up, uh, come to between the two of them, uh, almost 100% of the time, the matrimonial home ends up being sold. It can be sold to your spouse, it can be sold to you, you can buy it, um, or it can be sold to someone else. In each instance, the considerations for you can be very different. Quite often, if you have children, you and your spouse may try to have one of you buy the matrimonial home from the other. There's a, a sense of stability, which many people think this will impart for the kids. Uh, professionals debate this because either way, the kids' lives are going to change, and having one parent stay in the matrimonial home almost gives the kids a false sense of security, and it can end up painting one of the parents in a negative light in, in the kids' eyes. If you do want to consider one of you keeping the home, you really need to figure out if that's financially realistic. So here are three questions to ask yourself. Can you or your spouse afford to keep the home? Will that person qualify for a mortgage, usually larger than the one which may already exist? And lastly, will keeping the home really benefit that person financially over time? What I just alluded to when, when talking about mortgage is that if you do decide to try and buy your spouse's share in the home, you'll have to take on the existing debt uh, on the property and you'll have to find a way to pay your spouse for his or her share of the home's equity. Oftentimes this is going to require you taking on more debt in the form of a larger mortgage. If you're planning to sell the matrimonial home or you eventually decide that's the best thing to do, you and your spouse need to agree on some things so as to maximize the sale price. Nobody other than a trusted real estate advisor should know that you're selling due to divorce. That can really, really, really lead to lowball offers if buyers think you're desperate. You might think that you and your spouse can split the proceeds as soon as the sale of the home is completed, but you'll actually need to have a, sign, a separation agreement already signed before the lawyers can give you each your share of the money. Uh, usually, if you don't have a signed separation agreement, the proceeds from the property sale will stay in a lawyer's trust account until you and your spouse can agree on what to do with them. Now, keep in mind that if you want to buy another home for yourself, you'll need that same signed separation agreement I just talked about to qualify for any financing. Don't run out and make an emotional home purchase without lining up everything first. I've seen people sign separation agreements with terms that they would not normally have accepted only because they need it in order to close on their new purchase and not lose out on the deposit that they've put on that new purchased property. I've been working with separated and divorcing couples for close to 20 years, so please let me know if you need any type of family law related professional, uh, from a moving company or a mediator, to a parenting coordinator or mortgage agent separate, uh, specializing in getting financing for divorced individuals.